I guess going, going back to politics, uh, do you see any ambitions or any interest in running for any kind of political office or getting involved in the, the public sector ever again? Ah. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, they say never say never. One thing I'm very sure is that it's not, that, that that's not part of my immediate or, or near, near they say immediate meaning in the next um, two years. <laughs> near term meaning in the next seven years. <laughs> They cannot, I'm not, I'm not sure that that would be part of my indicator in term decisions in terms of... But it wasn't the last time, so... Yes, that's why I say never say never. <laughs> but last time I did not, you see, um, working for government is different from contesting for an election. They are completely two different things. Um, for now, what I, what I, I still do that. What I do for, because it's part of um, what my life is all about. I believe that... Um, Serving your fatherland and, and contributing to mankind is the hallmark of whatever you can do in this world. That's the height of service. So I still contribute my quota to government, but not in terms of in honorary capacity. There are still some state governments that um, consult me. But, you, but I will do that but because there is no financial involvement. There is no, I'm not going to, I'm not on, I'm not banned, I'm not under obligation. I'm only doing it pro bono. So I can give you, I can tell you to, I mean, jump wherever you want to jump into. But by the time you engage me as um, um, a consultant or as a staff or anything, then it's a different ball game altogether. The, the equation changes. So what I, what I do now is to see how I can still help them to achieve their objective in an advisory capacity free, free of charge. So I still do that. But in terms of running for government or I mean, running an election or is, um, I'm not sure it's mm -hmm. my, my immediate or near term. It's a very political answer. <laughs> <laughs> you never, never say never, you never can tell. So that's why I actually don't rule it out completely. Mm -hmm. um, because you never can dimension, I mean, the, we, we keep on hoping and working towards the fact that um, the political system in Nigeria will keep on improving. So if it's um, if it's conducive, and I believe that my services will actually lead to the betterment of um, the welfare of people, why not? Okay. That's why I say never say never. Okay. And I guess with the three years you spent in government, uh, if you were to outline some of the key issues that plague governance in Nigeria, what would you think those those issues are? I mean, certainly from an outsider perspective coming in, who has never said that government has been involved in politics, you must have observed some things which you thought. Uh, were inefficient or could be done better? I think, I think, I think my major, some of the challenges that you see in, um, from somebody that is coming from an outside, from private sector uh, segment, that's coming to the political space at the personal level, it's like number one, the pace is at the smallest level. Pace is impossible to understand, as well for a young person. Um, the unbridled corruption almost borders to a level of insanity. Um, and I'm saying that with all sense of responsibility. It, 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 it baffles me because I, we have too many young people here, and the young people are not better off. That's one thing that, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm worried about. As I've seen people, I mean, most of the people that were working with me came from abroad. They were very young. They, were, they came from, from business school. They came from Manchester, came from everywhere. They, I mean, they were private sector um, paid. And I realized that, I, I'm, I'm actually worried about that. I realized that the young people are even much more, their, their determination in terms of breaking the country is scary. <laughs> No, it's not a it's not a funny matter. It's, it's scary. How much money do you need in your lifetime? Let's say you are going to live hundred years. How much money do you need for your you, your husband, your wife, your children? How much money do you need? Why do you so why don't we ask ourselves the question? Why would somebody because you are in the position of authority, why would you decide to take hundred billion? Take uh, what what do you want to do with it? If it's not insanity. It's just people are just something is just wrong. 
fundamentally, it's not a Nigerian thing, it's an African, it's, it's actually not necessarily African because of color, it's because of governance structure, it's because of bad leadership, it's because of lack of accountability. I, I won't mention that there's a president of one of the top most countries in Africa that is spending all that is spending so much money turning his um, his place into like another country using puppet funds. And this is a country that is supposed to be a leading light in Africa. How do you explain that? How how, how do you justify it? How do you justify a governor? I mean, take turning his village into into something like heaven, when majority of the people are walloping in poverty. It's just madness. Why would the governor have a, a tarmac and a plane and things like that? I it's just it's just I just don't get it, and I don't think I can ever get it because even if you ask before, there's a World Bank report that um, a, a research work that shows clearly that there's no no correlation whatsoever between poverty and corruption. Because people tend to believe that, okay, it's because people are poor, that they are scared of their future. That's why they are corrupt. That can't be the reason why people are taking billions of money. It's just, uh, to, to, to the best of my knowledge, you see, like the governor of Lagos State said that when somebody is driving against traffic, it's not because he doesn't know he's bad or anything. Just take him to psychiatric hospital and let us find out whether the state of health is okay. It's the same thing with people that are still in public yeah. funds. Because it's even worse off when you, why it's painful to me is um, when you look at what the rich people in other parts of the world, what they are doing. People are taking 50% of their entire wealth and they are bringing it to Nigeria to fight polio. And yet, the people that we have in authority Taking the money that's supposed to be supposed to be using for the welfare of the people and converting into it's, 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 it's just it's just madness, pure madness.